oh, I never planted the seeds. This one I really like. Um, pick them, put a little olive oil and salt, and we pop them in the air fryer, and they are amazing. Helps me stagger my planting without actually having to stagger my planting. Hello, and I hope you're having a great day. I am getting ready to plant some seeds. I am direct sowing these. So today I wanted to share the seven or eight I'm not exactly sure what number I landed on, but I'm sure it'll be in the description because by then I'll have the number. Um, but seven or eight types um, or groups of seeds, plants that you can plant early in the spring, really as soon as the ground is workable, they say. Um, but I say about six to eight weeks, maybe four to six for some of them before your last frost. So here um, we're in zone 7B, 8A, depending on who you ask. So our last frost is sometime around the beginning of April. Right now it's smack dab in the middle of February so we're perfectly uh, timed which rarely happens usually it's either like January and then it's like the end of March I don't know what happens to the months in between so today I'm trying to be more organized and actually get this done so I'm just gonna jump into it um, a few that I have are radishes and a lot of these are ones you can also grow a lot of these in the fall but in the spring they tend to be sweeter less spicy so with radishes, especially if you have a wet spring and a cooler season spring, it actually helps them to be sweeter and less spicy. Um, I also do go for some varieties that say that they're going to be less spicy. Um, my daughters like to just rip them out of the ground and wipe them off and eat them. But here we have an early scarlet globe. That's probably one of my favorites. I do have a white radish and then, I don't know, a Saxa too. I'm not really sure what that stands for. Um, a lot of my seeds, are right, MI Gardener and um, Baker Creek. They're the two online retailers I buy from the most for seeds. And then the other stuff I just buy local at Home Depot or wherever I find them. Here I have sugar peas. This is probably my most I will get these planted um, because I love them um, and my children love them. Uh, so this is probably the one I know is a guaranteed hit. So we have uh, sugar daddies and a snap pea or a snow pea. So snow peas or peas in general are great to be planted this time of year. You could almost plant them a little bit earlier, but this is when I'm getting around to it. The next one we have are kale. So I also have three kinds of kale, a dwarf curled leaf. I actually do like curly leaf kale for some things. Um, I like the, um, the tougher texture, weirdly enough. And then we have premier kale. And if you look, this is a much more tender leaf kale. It's really good for salads. And then the Dazzling Blue, um, I think this reminds me of, a, yep, Lacinato type kale. This one I really like, um, pick them, put a little olive oil and salt, we pop them in the air fryer and they are amazing. <clears throat> um, all right, and I know I'm running through because I wanna go through these and I actually wanna plant them with you because then I know I'm gonna get them planted and it's not gonna be March 30th and I'm like, oh, I never planted the seeds. Um, so I am going to jump into the next one. We have lettuce. Um, I actually have two Merlot lettuce and you'll see, I'll show you out there. I planted Merlot lettuce in, I think it was November. We had a warmer um, late fall and they survived all winter. We didn't have extremely cold weather, but we had a lot of mid 20 degree days and nights and they've lasted really well. So I have uh, my lettuce, a little gem, and a black seeded Simpson. I think this was a pretty popular one when I looked online. This is more of like a head, kind of forms a head of cabbage. This one's a head of cabbage. Though this one can be, I think it's more common to kind of pick the leaves off. <clears throat> um, where are we? Good old carrots. I actually don't have a ton of success with carrots. I think part of it is because we do have pretty high clay content in our soil. And although I have raised beds, the soil in there is a mixture of clay and other things. Or I don't know, maybe I'm just unlucky, but I, I still plant them partially because if we get some out of it, it's great. But also I like to plant some in a section that I know I can leave through next winter. And then next spring and summer, they bloom such beautiful blooms and a lot of beneficial insects really like them. So I actually like to leave a few intentionally for that. I want to make sure I'm not missing any. Um, and if you like this type of video, please like and comment down below so I know to create more. Also, um, I do tend to produce a lot of videos around baking, cooking, gardening, wellness. Um, so I would love if you would subscribe and hang around for more videos in the future. All right, we have beets. Sorry, first I thought this was a radish. Um, so this is a cylindrical beet. Honestly, not my favorite. 
I think this is from, this is another one that I've bought a lot, um, Peaceful Valley. So I like their seeds. Um, they have a good selection of different seeds. Uh, so, and then we have just good old Burpee. These are uh, Detroit Dark Red. I think this is one of the really common red beets. I love red beets. Thankfully, my kids like red beets depending on how they're prepared. They're not a fan of pickled, but they'll eat them roasted or we slice them up really small and put them in salads. They'll eat it like that. But honestly, part of the reason I grow beets is for the greens. I use that um, in place of spinach in a lot of recipes, especially if it's a cooked recipe. I'll cut down the stems, cook them in with like my carrots and celery, and then the leafy part, I pop in at the end for a little extra vitamins. And a lot of the vitamins you get for a lot of these root vegetables, the vitamins that are in the roots, a lot of that's also in the greens as well. And another unusual one that I think people don't appreciate enough are turnips. So I like turnips. I've had them growing up in a few times here and there and a lot of times cooked. And the ones in the store, I mean, like, they're like this. They're huge. They're sometimes bitter, spicy, like almost dry. Like they've been allowed to dry, like get a little bit too far in the um, growing process. So I planted some a couple of years ago and then ended up thinking that they were a white radish because it was one of the white ones and I picked them young and they were amazing they were sweet and juicy eventually some of them got a tiny bit of the spice but like not an intense spiciness and the flavor is so different than anything at the store so I've loved them ever since and actually my kids love them so radish and turnips are their favorite to pull snow peas um and then they'll pick fennel and like a lot of the different greens in the spring when they're still kind of sweet, they'll pick that and make little sandwiches with it and eat it. <clears throat> um, so we have tokenashi. So this is a Japanese, yes, Japanese variety turnip. Um, I like them. I think, let me see which one. Yes. So I think this one's the one resistant to bolting. This one I had growing pretty well into summer and actually through a chunk of the summer season, I made sure to water them a little bit more, but they actually held up really well. My chickens are acting out just to make sure they get on camera. I have a shogun, shogun? Uh, turnip. That's another Japanese variety. This one's a little bit more of a cooler season, so not as resistant to bolting. And then, I mean, really, this is actually my, one of my favorites. This is a purple top white globe. So this, if allowed to grow to maturity, would be more similar to what we see in the stores here in the U.S. All right, I think I'm getting down to the end. The last group are cabbage type um, plants. So this is savoy cabbage. I'm actually not going to plant this. Um, we are redesigning my whole garden area. So there's only a couple of beds that are gonna be staying where they are. The others will have to move. So I won't be able to plant cool season crops in my entire garden area. And savoy cabbage, the one thing I ran into and I'm reading on the back is and maybe I read it online, but I think they're cold tolerant, but they take a lot longer to grow than some other cabbage varieties. And we, I get hit so hard with um, the cabbage worm that I just had a hard time getting these to grow to the point that we could use them um, to really make it worth growing. I actually prefer growing Napa cabbage, which has that similar roughly texture. Obviously the taste is a little bit different, but I like that. I use it in more things than I use Savoy, so it just wasn't worth the space, but I wanted to show it for an example. And if this is one you like, it is an expensive one at the store, so if you can grow it, grow it, and if you use it. Then we have, this one is one that you might be familiar with, bok choy. It's actually a really easy one to grow, um, and it's very satisfying, and again, I like to pick these much smaller and younger than what they're showing there. I think they're just, you know, doing that for drama, but they are really good if you cut them off at the base when they are babies which sounds cruel when I say it that way. Um, and then we have Chujimas, wow, Chujimisai. Chujimisai? I don't know. It is a cross between Tatsui and Komatsuna. Well, that is a lot of words that I don't know, but this is another in that same family of the more cold tolerant greens. I um, mean, actually I have one that's self-sown, one little one out there in the garden that's uh, gonna get picked soon. And then the last one, yes. So the last one that I have to show here today is, well, I have spinach, um, 
this spinach is another one that can go into that one of those two greens categories so spinach is another one along with lettuce that's really great to grow this time of year and then we have dill dill and fennel i don't need to grow fennel because i have it popping up all over i usually let it go to seed and i have a lot that i've actually just overwintered um, but Ducat dill, that's just this particular variety, but just dill in general is a really good thing to grow this time of year. It is one that will bolt if it grows in too um, hot, too far into the summer. Uh, so um, a couple of things to mention I didn't think to add early on. I do live in zone, wait, did I say that? Yes, I did, the zone that I live in. So I did mention that we don't have really hard winters on the most part, every once in a while we might, but um these are ones i do have some stuff growing from the fall that i planted that's finally starting to get moving i'm gonna throw this stuff in again i probably won't plant all of these seeds and i might not plant all of these varieties because i am working with some limited space but come along and i'm going to uh, show you the garden area and when i plant these okay the first one i'm gonna plant are the sugar daddy peas i'm not gonna be too particular with how far I space these. I have a little measuring tool, but honestly, I never use it. I don't like when gardening takes me too long, because then I just don't stick with it. Also, you'll see that I didn't really dig particular holes. Um, the ground is so soft right now, and I have a really thick layer of mulch that I'm going to be able to put on top, so I'm not being too oops, particular. These are my husband's Crocs. I don't buy a pair of my own, but I wear his all the time. <laughs> okay, so what I normally do is, you'll see this open ground right here. I have this one, and I just kind of push it down in, create a little divot, and once I put over this little bit of soil and a light layer of mulch, it's in there far enough that they're good to go. And again, this time of year, because it is so early spring, we get rain on a regular, regular basis so they're not gonna be in danger of drying out. And over here, I dug another little channel and I'm going to be planting, this is Karabi de Mas Masan, no idea, but these are a snow or snap pea as well. So I'm gonna pop these into there. The next one I really want to get planted, I'm probably not going to get them all planted today, but I am definitely going to plant dill. I did not have much success with dill last year. And I want to grow enough. I'm just going to throw a few in another row that I have too. But I want to grow enough dill that I can cut it and dry it um, to use. Because I use dried dill um, in like salad dressing, a lot of different recipes, um, and I've missed having it. So just that one, because they're so small, I'm going to just cover them much more lightly than uh, some of the others. Another one I'm going to make sure to plant today are turnips. I'm probably just going to stick with mostly these and maybe a few of the shogun. I do like to plant a lot of these root vegetables in groups of four or five. And that way, as they grow, and especially because we pick them so young, it works perfectly. Because as they grow, one, it takes less space, so I'm able to grow more in a smaller space. Um, but as they grow and I pick off the young turnips, or beets, or radishes, it then gives room for the others to grow. So in a way, it kind of helps me stagger my planting without actually having to stagger my planting. Okay. Last but not least today, I'm going to plant some radishes. One thing I forgot to mention is I like to plant radishes close to the edge so that my daughters can actually come through and pick some. They can get to it without having to uh, trudge over my plants. Because, I mean, they're children. Even as adults, we struggle with it. These um, I should be planting in groups of four to five, but to be honest, I need to get done. I'm just going to throw them in the ground. They will be okay. So the other thing that I do with radishes, turnips, 
um, peas. Uh, a lot of these things actually is, I plant some now and then I like to leave a little space and plant some again in a couple of weeks. And that way I also have uh, some growing all the time. Again, because I tend to plant these a little bit more closely together, it does naturally stagger them because it's gonna stunt the growth of some while others are kind of going crazy, but I do actually stagger them as well. All right, I think that's the last of what I'm gonna plant today, but here, let me show what I have growing. So here is some kale and some other greens. Here I have this lettuce has grown through the entire winter. There I have mustard greens that have grown through the entire winter. To be honest, mustard greens aren't one that we eat too often, but I grew them for the chickens. Um, and also I might try to pickle some because I do like them in one particular recipe. I allowed a couple of the white turnips. I forget which one it was, but I let them grow like crazy because this is what I wanted. I wanted them to flower. It gives us seeds, greens to feed to the chickens, but flowers for the beneficial insects really early in the season. Here I have a fennel that is just shooting back up from last year. Here we have the tot soy that I mentioned that self-seeded from last year. And lastly, I have some uh, garlic that I planted in the fall. I've been wanting to do it for years. I finally did it. I finally got it planted. So squirrels dug up a few I had to replant, but so far I think even the ones I had to replant um, kind of rooted back again. So looking good. It's still going to be a couple of months before I can dig these out, but I'm excited to see how these grow. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a great day. And as I said, please um, hang around for more videos in the future. Check out some of my other videos, like, subscribe. And again, I hope you have a great day.